Thanks very much. And Nick, could you join at the podium? Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to, um, I don't want to repeat all the praises because obviously if I start from the beginning, it will take me an hour. But uh, I want to praise Bob Kahn. He was an outstanding leader amongst all the deans of engineering in the UC system. He was our chairman in our meetings with Dick Atkinson. And uh, he and I were friends and colleagues from UCLA days, and that's what, what put us together. Primarily because one of the questions was, what do you have in communications faculty and so on to support such an institute? We had zero. So the new faculty allocations uh, helped us create the Center for Pervasive Communications and Computing, and thanks to Ralph Ciceron, we got $3 million from Connexent, and then all together we had more than $50 million in gifts and donations, although we had to raise only $30 million. And our faculty at the time were only 70. Now, I want to say a couple of more things. There are four institutes. The most successful one is Cal 82. There's a fundamental reason. The leadership is great, yes, but the more fundamental reason is because it's engineering science. And we forget what re reality is. Mathematics and science is fundamental. But it is only engineering science that transforms all that knowledge to useful products and things that makes the economy run. From the simplest and most trivial thing you use every day to the most complex. It's engineering science. That's what makes Cal 82 as successful as it is. And I want to ask a couple of questions about the future because we have spoken about the 10 years of the past. Do you know that one in two Americans does not know how long it takes the Earth to go around the sun? In science, the United States graduates up to par with Asia and Europe, but in engineering, we are far behind. Asia, in relative terms, is around 25%, Europe around 15%, and the United States around 4.5%. Do you know that most of the faculty in the, all the major universities in the United States are people like myself with an accent, former foreign students who became immigrants. Globalization is something that is very threatening to the United States as far as engineering is concerned. Because 20 years ago, when I went to give lectures in Scandinavia, you would not even see Southern Europeans in the faculty. Now, because of globalization, they know they have to compete with the United States, and that you will see Asian faculty as well as Southern Europeans. And most students now are foreign students. I was in Singapore three weeks ago, and they have a similar problem. They need to import foreign students in Singapore from other nations in Asia in order to be more competitive. So even though 10 years ago, Governor Davis and Dick Atkinson proposed an increase in engineering schools faculty. We are falling way behind. And if you believe, like I do, that the power of this country is its economy, which is based, yes, in science and mathematics, but without engineering, there are no products to make and sell. There are no Googles, there are no Intels, there are no Broadcoms, there are no Qualcomms, nothing at all. And we say we're the most powerful democracy in the world. Yes, we are, but it's because of the Defense Department. And that is all engineering from science and mathematics, through engineering, all the weaponry. So I challenge you all to look into the next 20, 10, 20 years as far as these institutes are concerned. And ask the same questions that I just asked. How are we going to move into the future if we cannot find the talent that we could 30, 40 years ago coming into this country, staying here, and creating the future that we are speaking about. Thank you for listening. Thanks very much, Nick. Uh, we are uh, fortunate that um, Steve Beckwith, who uh, is the Vice President for Research 
of the University uh, of California Office of the President, uh, and formerly the head of the Space Telescope Science Institute and an astrophysical colleague of mine since I think the late 1970s. Now, a lot of you weren't born then, but um, anyway, it's, it's uh, wonderful to be able to work. Steve has become the champion, the guardian of the institutes within the Office of the President. He has fought tirelessly for uh, our operating budget, for our prioritization within uh, the Office of the President, and we're so thrilled that, that you could actually make it here in spite of the San Diego's fog's best efforts to keep you away. Come say a few words. Thank you, Larry. It was uh, actually it was, uh, it was, uh, actually, 1978, it was, uh, 1978 in, uh, in uh, Cayuga, uh, Ithaca, New York, Ithaca, that we New York. first uh, met and became college. Um, I, I, I can't. I, I can't. Everything. Everything. Everything good. Everything good pretty much is, been said. I. I will say that uh, I'm say a that, relative uh, newcomer, a relative to, newcomer California, to California, and, uh, and uh, the institutes was one of the first things I heard about. Was was about was partly that's because partly Bob that's Bob because Bob Don hired me. Tireless champion as well, but uh, it represented, I think, something. I think something a little bit to the whole university culture. There was a buzz about the creation of the institutes. Their universities now have exactly this was very because the university itself is a tremendous tremendous well of well great of ideas great not, ideas not just, not, not not just in across many many fields um, but i think there's a but i think there's perception a in the public very often the public very often is the ideas kind of sit there and they, they stay inside but they don't get out one and of and the ideas one of the ideas i thought behind was to form a bit more of an interface for the business community business community and make it much much easier for the great things that are happening within the university world and to affect people's lives in a positive way, uh, in a faster than, than it has before. And I think this experiment has, has paid off handsomely. Uh, I think uh, Governor Davis was uh, very for, foresighted in this, and I think the chancellors were very foresighted. I can say that um, all of the institutes do represent this new mode of collaboration. Um, I, of course, we love all the institutes at the Office of the President. I, I will say that the Cal IT2 is, is certainly exemplary in having this kind of collaboration where you can really see everything is split very, very uh, evenly between the two campuses. And I think that represents a, a tremendous uh, stride forward on the cutting edge. You have uh, certainly our support at the Office of the President. It's really, it's, it's been a privilege to be able to get you the resources you need to do great things because really we're just working on your reflected glory. So thank you very much. Well, thanks so much, Steve.